Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. Is it too late to get into machine learning? This is a question that I get a lot from all of you, either in the comments or in DMs on my Instagram or on Twitter. And it's a kind of funny question for me to get because when I started getting into machine learning about five years ago, I thought that I was late to get into this field. So if you clicked on this video purely just to get an answer to the question, is it too late to get into machine learning? The short answer is no. And the longer answer is the rest of this video. If you're new here, I'm Jordan and I'm a PhD student at MIT who makes videos about AI, emerging tech, productivity, and mental health. And if that sounds interesting to you, you can subscribe down below and you can follow me on all of my other socials over here. If you have questions about my journey in machine learning or getting into the field, you can leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them either when I go check the comments or in another video. So obviously the short answer to the question of is it too late to get into machine learning is no. As someone who's been in the field for a while, if anything, I think that there's even more opportunities to get into this field than there were before. But I do think that when people ask the question of is it too late to get into machine learning, it's often referring to a specific kind of career in machine learning that might actually be more difficult to get into now. These are the big tech company machine learning jobs. These are professorships in machine learning and computer science, essentially careers that would fall in the footsteps of the big names that you tend to hear about now who started in this field before we even really called it artificial intelligence or machine learning. And I would say that I think the bar for getting into those fields has definitely gotten higher. There's just a lot more people interested in being a machine learning researcher at Google or doing a PhD in machine learning or becoming an academic in machine learning. And so there are only so many jobs, there are only so many spaces. That number hasn't really changed over the course of the past 10 or 20 years. So in that sense, if you're looking for that specific career path, I would say it's harder, but not impossible. And I'll also get into whether or not I think you need a PhD to get into ML towards the end of this video. Having said all that, I think the reason why I don't think it's too late to get into machine learning is because there's so many other things that you can do that either fall into machine learning or overlap into the field of machine learning that we don't really hear as much about or talk as much about, even on this channel. So for example, I'm in a PhD program for medical engineering and medical physics. It's not a machine learning program. It's not in the computer science department, but I still do machine learning work. And I think this is actually a great example of ways that you can get into machine learning if you are interested in going the PhD route without applying directly to machine learning programs because those are often a lot harder to get into just because there's so many more people applying and so the bar gets higher but you don't necessarily need to go straight into a degree like that especially if that's not necessarily where your interests lie. So outside of the standard machine learning researcher position at Google there are a ton of other ways that you can get into the field. For one you can work at a smaller company you don't have to work at Google not everyone's going to work at Google and depending on the kind of company culture you're looking for it actually might be a better fit for you depending on what you're interested in doing. But because I don't necessarily know what the wide range of jobs you can do in ML are these days, I actually went on Twitter and asked all of you about the unusual or underrated jobs in machine learning that people might want to hear about that they might not know about anyway. So looking at Twitter, a lot of the replies had to do with applications related work. So applied machine learning towards things like drug discovery or chemical engineering, things like environmental engineering, clean energy, designing cleaner buildings and smart cities. There were also a lot of comments about more creative pursuits. So we're starting to see a lot more talk about AI generated art, AI generated music. And I think that there's definitely interesting work over there. There. The one that I actually really want to highlight is education policy and kind of the legal side of things because we're in a really interesting time when it comes to machine learning and AI where a lot of the legal frameworks, a lot of the policy frameworks, a lot of the educational frameworks around this stuff are being developed now and being discussed and implemented now. And so if you're interested in circling back to something like AI generated music, what the copyright law around that looks like, then this would be a great time to get interested in machine learning, get interested in AI, get interested in computation, but also take a legal perspective to it or take a policy perspective to it. You know, how do we regulate these systems? In fact, 
the Office of Science Technology Policy for the White House is developing an AI Bill of Rights right now, and they're asking people for comments and ideas on what might go in that, and that might be a really interesting place for someone to work. In other words, similar to how companies have CIOs, chief information officers, that essentially deal with anything IT related in the company and act as almost the liaison between that part of the company and everyone else who doesn't necessarily deal in the tech and dev side of things, I think that there will be more opportunities for people to sit in almost a chief AI officer kind of role where your job is to liaise between the researchers doing the work and the people who are running the rest of the company who may not understand the technical nitty gritty of what's happening. And within that job, you still need to be able to understand both sides. Funnily enough, one of the unusual slash underrated jobs that did come up on Twitter was also the kind of AI for good, AI ethics side of things. And I think that that's definitely a really interesting field. It's obviously gotten a lot more play lately, but the funding situation for it is a little bit all over the place at the moment. Um, I think it's a little bit like working in corporate governance in some ways in that companies often want to partner with or hire people to work on algorithmic fairness or tech ethics, especially larger companies, so that they can publicly establish the values and efforts that they're making around those things. But as we saw in the whole debacle with Tim Gebru, there's also definitely the chance that something will come up and all of those values will go out of the window and the legal side of things will come in and things won't necessarily turn out the way that you want them to. So there are a lot of small companies who work in this sphere. So the Algorithmic Justice League, I think, is actually hiring a director of communications and some other position. I can post links in the description for anyone who's curious. Um, and they essentially work with companies to audit their AI algorithms to make sure that they are fair, to make sure that they know about any biases that are in them. Uh, Tina Gebber, I think, is actually starting up her own small research group that is going to be also working on fairness work. So there are a lot of new, like very new, like within the last month or so opportunities to do this kind of work. But the landscape of it when it comes to careers is definitely still a little bit more up in the air. And then lastly, 80,000 Hours, which is a website slash nonprofit, has a job board that actually has a lot of really interesting positions. If you're interested in getting a sense of what kinds of jobs there are out there that aren't necessarily the stereotypical machine learning researcher position that you hear about. And I'd highly recommend checking that out, especially if you're actively looking for jobs. They have new postings all the time and it can be really interesting to see what kinds of opportunities come through that website because there's a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have known was job <laughs> until I saw it. So the question that I probably get the most when it comes to whether or not it's too late to get into machine learning is whether or not you actually need a PhD to get into the field. My general response to this is not necessarily. I think that if you want to go into academia, if you want to become a professor, obviously you do just because that's how academia works in the US. But if that's not your plan, then I don't really think you need the PhD. You do need a solid understanding of machine learning and there are a lot of ways to go about getting that. On the other hand, if you are interested in getting a PhD, but you're not quite at the point where you're applying for that, there are tons of ways to start your educational journey before you get there or in parallel like I did. So I took online courses learning to code in high school, which set up a great foundation for me in college when I was starting to take more CS theory courses. And if you're looking for an online machine learning course to get started with, I would highly recommend checking out Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. If you've heard me talk about Brilliant before, then you know it's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. In fact, they've recently updated a bunch of their courses to be even more interactive, which I really appreciate as someone who learns better using visual and physical intuition than through rote memorization. Brilliant has a great set of courses for anyone interested in dipping their toes into machine learning, including algorithm fundamental programming with Python and intro to neural networks. In fact, in their Python programming course, you just shift around these blocks of pseudocode and then you can get immediate feedback on your results. It's a great way to understand how computer algorithms work. And then once you have that down, the coding syntax becomes a lot less intuitive intimidating, which I definitely would have appreciated when I was teaching myself machine learning five years ago. If you're not sure whether machine learning is for you, Brilliant also has a ton of other great STEM courses for you to check out. So I actually took their cryptocurrency course last year and it was super interesting. Best of all, you can try it Brilliant for free and get 20% off a year of STEM learning if you sign up at brilliant.org slash Jordan. It's definitely not too late to get into machine learning, but it's also never too early to start learning something new and Brilliant is a great place to start. You can also check out my video on how I got from tissue engineering to machine learning as a researcher. You can follow me on my various socials down here and otherwise I will see you all next week. Bye.